Okay, hello YouTube. I'm going to be calling this video how to uh, beat the London system. Um, the London system is very popular. It's d4, d5, and then white plays f4. And then usually white will employ a setup where he just kind of plays knight f3, and then he usually will try to follow up really passively. Like he'll play e3, and he'll play h3, and c3, and bishop e2, and castle. And people play this setup because they're just really because they're lazy, because they just don't want to study theory, and they just want to get a position that they feel like is completely safe, and they just want to play something that's just totally equal and totally boring. And if you want to, you can certainly let them do that, because you don't really have to refute the London. I mean, it's just, it's it's kind of a dumb opening. I mean, you could just develop, you could just play e6, bishop e7, castle, and just develop your pieces. But I think actually black can be a little bit more ambitious. I think that if white chooses to put his pieces on kind of these passive squares, if he chooses to play bishop f4, and if he just doesn't really bring anything to the table, I think that black can bring some stuff to the table. And I think black can actually play for an advantage against the London. So I think that really starts with the move c5. I think if white's not going to attack the center, I think black can attack the center. I think black can kind of play like sort of a queen's gambit declined in reverse kind of thing. Now, usually what people will do is they'll continue to play passive because remember their plan. They want to just kind of hunker down and just do nothing for the next, you know, 30, 40 moves, hoping that they don't lose with white. So then you play knight c6. And this is kind of critical. You, you do the move order that you do things in is actually kind of important here. Um, you, you want to play knight c6 because you actually kind of want to vacate the back rank. But also you want to put some pressure here. You actually want them to play pawn to c3. And most of them will. Uh, a handful of players have gotten into playing knight c3. Um, there's a little bit of a trap here with knight b5. If you just play a6, you're fine. So if they play knight c3, you play a a6, and you just kind of ask them what their knight's doing on c3, because it's just not doing a whole lot. So, like I said, most people will play pawn to c3. After they play pawn to c3, my recommendation is queen b6. I honestly feel this is slight advantage black in pretty much every continuation. We play queen b6, and we're putting pressure on this b2 pawn, they have to defend it somehow, some way. Anything they do seems like it's going to lead to some sort of slight edge black. Obviously, if they push the pawn, they're going to have weaknesses on the queen side. Their only other option is just kind of to defend it with their queen, and I would say the vast majority of people do. They play queen b3, and then I recommend pawn to c4. And this is kind of an awkward moment for white. If they exchange queens, this is kind of a positional thing that, throws a lot of beginners off, but a lot of masters, every master or better I've ever talked to seems to kind of understand this universally, that black has actually improved his pawn structure by moving the pawn from the A file to the B file. The pawn on A7 only controls one square, whereas the pawn on B6 only controls, uh, will control two squares. So you've actually increased your control of the queen side. You haven't decreased it. And you've also opened up the A file. So you're the only person with a developed rook at this point. And now a lot of beginners, they think, well, this must be advantage white because I have access now to the b5 square and you can't take it away. And that gives me access to c7. So let's just say that white follows through with this kind of plan um, and plays the move knight a3. We just continue developing with bishop f5 and then knight b5. They're going for knight c7. Now we do have to be a little careful here because the real problem with black's position is this extended uh, c pawn. And we're actually a little concerned that in certain situations white could play b3. Now right now if white plays b3 it's not an issue because we have this open a file. So b3 has been parried by c captures b3 when they can't reply because we have this uh, very handy looking uh, pin against this rook on a1. So what we don't want to do here is play the very natural rooking rook c8 to guard against knight c7 because then they'll play b3, cb3, ab3. This is probably advantage white. Actually, it's probably a pretty big advantage for white because white has the open a file and he has this nice preponderance of pawns in the middle, good solid development, and actually that knight is starting to look better and better. So what I would recommend instead of that is play rook a5 and immediately put a question to this knight because white's going to be left with options that just none of them are, are very appetizing. He could play, um, at this point, he could play pawn to a4 and uh, just 
I'll just give you the short answer. Eventually this pawn is just going to hang. We're going to play bishop c2 and we're going to take on a4, period. And we're going to do that by basically just finishing our development and doing nothing. So we're going to play like e6, bishop e2, bishop e7. They can play bishop c7 and go after this pawn, but we just retreat our knight, we protect it, whatever. And then they can play knight d6 and they can cut off our king. Whoop did he do and we can still play f6 and king f7 at any point. So we just play bishop c2, we rip this pawn on a4. They're not cutting off anything. We can play f6, king f7, finish our development that way, and we're going to be up a clean pawn here. Um, this is just kind of ridiculous. So again, going back to the options, they could play a4. Of course, the other option that people take is they play knight c7 check. Oh no, we can't castle anymore. So knight c7 check, and then we play, uh, we just move our king to d7. And notice that we've kind of actually trapped this knight on c7 it it doesn't have anywhere to go so they're actually gonna really have to play a4 here anyway just to give that knight a square to go because if they don't we're just going to respond with e6 bishop e7 maybe knight h4 to take this bishop and take the knight if they make a retreat square for the bishop with h3 so that knight h5 doesn't work then we're just going to play e6 bishop e7 rook c8 and then just rip the two pieces for the for the rook and we just have a huge advantage here so you're going to have to play a4 anyway, e6, and then the position just gets super ridiculous because they have to retreat the knight. We play bishop c2, we hit the pawn, and then the knight on b5 is hanging. They can play knight g5 and go for another cheap shot. We can just defend that cheap shot. Knight d8 defends the cheap shot. And actually, if you look at this on a computer, the computer thinks the best move is to move the knight back to f3. So that that's how ridiculous this position is. And then bishop takes a4. They want to play the spite check, king c8, knight a3, and then... Bishop b3, and, and this is like major, major advantage black. Like even though black isn't up more, he's only up a pawn here, black's pieces are so good, black has a huge advantage here. So like let's say after, for example, f3, we would play knight h5, f6, Just this is just a for instance after all these exchanges and just improving our position a little bit. We would play bishop d6, actually just to misplace the king, king f2, and then we would rip on a3. You could just rip on a3 right away, too. Rook a3, rook a3, b a3, h5, kicking this knight back, knight e3, knight d6, and there's like no option here. These pawns are just all going to fall in one way or in one form or another. Um, these pawns are all just going to go, and that's just because black's pieces are just so much more active than white's here. There's just really no way around this. So, for example, e5, knight e4, king e1, knight g3, rook h3, knight f1, knight f1, and this is just ridiculous. We have six pawns and black has four, and I guess we can continue to play chess from here, but it's 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 pretty helpless for white. So going back to um, kind of the main line, I guess we could call it, is after queen b3, c4, uh, white should retreat his queen. He shouldn't exchange. Exchanging is bad. This is just, just advantage black. Black has the open file. Black has the better pawns. So then we can play kind of a cutesy move here. We play bishop f5. We attack this queen. And needless to say, we can't play queen takes f5. And this is also a really important reason our knight's on c6, because our rook is holding c8. If we do the same idea with the knight still on b8, we don't have uh, this move queen takes b2 because of queen c8 mate. So... Make sure you get in your knight c6 move kind of early. After queen f5, queen takes b2. This is just major, major advantage. Black, black is capturing the rook on a1, and that's the end of the game. So after bishop f5, they have to play queen c1, and then we continue our development with e6, bishop e2, and then plop that knight down on the e4 square. They'll usually play knight on b to d2. If they play knight on b to d2 instead of bishop e2, you should still put your knight on e4. And then here's the critical idea. You play bishop e7. Very important. Put your bishop on e7 castles and then my idea to just basically refute this opening to blow it out of the water and it's backed up by computer analysis just bum rush them with your kingside points my my explanation for this is really simple white has done nothing he has basically sat down and done nothing and he wants to claim that he has an advantage i disagree Black has done a lot more than white. Black broke in the middle. Black gained space with c5, c4. Black gained time with c5, c4 and bishop f5. Um, black has more space, more time. Black should be the one attacking. So I think black has an advantage here, and I think the best way to execute that advantage is simply not to castle. You play g5, bishop g3, and h5, and you rush him on the king side. And if you actually look at this with an engine, um, the engine gives almost plus 2 for black here, which is just amazing. 
because a lot of people will play right into this position thinking there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And in reality, this is probably just major advantage black. And I've played this position a bunch of times and I've gotten some very, very good results. The um, How to Crush the London. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope you learned something new about chess. Thank you very much for watching.